Can you summarize the main points in the blog post, AGI ruin a list of lethalities, things that jump to your mind? Because um, it's a set of thoughts you have about reasons why AI is likely to kill all of us. <laughs> so I, I guess I could, but I would offer to instead say, like, drop that empathy with me. I bet you don't believe that. Why don't you tell me about how, why you believe that AGI is not going to kill everyone, and then I can like try to describe how my theoretical perspective differs from that. Ooh. Well, so, so well that that means I have to uh, the word you don't like to steal man the perspective that AI is not going to kill us. I think that's a matter of probabilities. Maybe I was just mistaken. What what do you believe? Just just like forget like the the debate and and the like dualism and just like like. What do you believe? What would you actually believe? What are the probabilities even? I think this the probabilities are hard for me to think about, really hard. I kind of think in the in the number of trajectories. I don't know what probability to assign to each trajectory, but I'm just looking at all possible trajectories that happen. And I tend to think that there is more trajectories that lead to a, a, a positive outcome the negative one. That said, the negative ones, at least some of the negative ones, are that lead to the destruction of the human species. And its replacement by nothing interesting nothing or interesting. worthwhile, even from a very cosmopolitan perspective on what counts as worthwhile. Yes, so both are interesting to me to investigate, which is humans being replaced by interesting AI systems and not interesting AI systems. Both are a little bit terrifying. But yes, the worst one is the paperclip maximizer, something totally boring. But to me, the positive, I mean, we can, we can talk about trying to make the case of what the positive trajectories look like. I just would love to hear your intuition of what the negative is. So at the core of your belief that, uh, maybe you can correct me, that AI is gonna kill all of us, is that the alignment problem is really difficult. I mean, in, in the form we're facing it. So usually in science, if you're mistaken, you run the experiment, it shows a result different from what you expected, and you're like, oops. And then you like try a different theory. That one also doesn't work, and you say, oops. And at the end of this process, um, which may take decades, or, and you know, sometimes faster than that, you now have some idea of what you're doing. AI itself went through this long process of um, people thought it was going to be easier than it was. There's a famous statement that I am somewhat inclined to like pull out my phone and try to read off exactly. You can, by the way. All right. Oh. Ah, yes. We propose that a two-month, 10-man study of artificial intelligence be carried out during the summer of 1956 at Dartmouth College in Hanover, New Hampshire. The study is to proceed on the basis of the conjecture that every aspect of learning or any other feature of intelligence can in principle be so precisely described the machine can be made to simulate it. An attempt will be made to find out how to make machines use language, form abstractions and concepts, solve kinds of problems now reserved for humans, and improve themselves. We think that a significant advance can be made in one or more of these problems if a carefully selected group of scientists work on it together for a summer. And in that report, uh, summarizing some of the major subfields of artificial intelligence that are still worked on to this day. And there's similarly the, sto the story, which I'm not sure at the moment is apocryphal or not, of that the uh, grad student who got assigned to solve computer vision over the summer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, computer vision in particular is very interesting, how little, uh, how little we respected the complexity of vision. So 60 years later, um, we're you know, making progress on a bunch of that, thankfully not yet improve themselves, um, but it took a whole lot of time. And all the stuff that people initially tried with bright-eyed hopefulness did not work the first time they tried it, or the second time, or the third time, or the tenth time, or 20 years later. 
And the, and the researchers became old and grizzled and cynical veterans who would tell the next crop of bright-eyed, cheerful grad students, artificial intelligence is harder than you think. And if alignment plays out the same way, the, di- the problem is that we do not get 50 years to try and try again and observe that we were wrong and come up with a different theory and realize that the entire thing is going to be like way more difficult than we realized at the start. Because the first time you fail at aligning something much smarter than you are, you die and you do not get to try again. And if we, if every time we built a poorly aligned superintelligence and it killed us all, we got to observe how it had killed us and, you know, not immediately know why, but like come up with theories and come up with the theory of how you do it differently and try it again and build another superintelligence then have that kill everyone. And then like, oh, well, I guess that didn't work either and try again and become grizzled cynics and tell the young-eyed research- researchers that it's not that easy then in 20 years or 50 years, I think we would eventually crack it. In other words, I do not think that alignment is fundamentally harder than artificial intelligence was in the first place. But if we needed to get artificial intelligence correct on the first try or die, we would all definitely now be dead. That is a more difficult, more lethal form of the problem. Like if those people in 1956 had needed to correctly guess how hard AI was and like correctly theorize how to do it on the first try or everybody dies and nobody gets to do any more science, then everybody would be dead and we wouldn't get to do any more science. That's the difficulty. 